I saw an opportunity with BitBoy Crypto. They said, yeah, we're going to do a NFT trading card game. And I just, I just shot my shot. I, I, I cold messaged TJ because I was like, if I, if I message BitBoy, it's going to get lost in the noise. So let me, right. let me message, you know, the, the number two at the company, the CEO of the company. And I, I was like, hey, here's my background. I'm a pro gamer. I'm one of the best players in the world. At this time, I had the world's number one Magic the Gathering TikTok account. I say, look, I'm willing to abandon everything, jump ship, come work for you guys. I need to get into crypto. I'm kind of afraid to over message. I don't want to be a bugaboo. Right, right. right. And then uh, some random stream, uh, TJ and Ben, they're like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think DZ's here this weekend. He's going to start next week. And I was like, uh, I, I, I am? I don't know. It's news to me. I literally packed my car left a whole bunch of stuff a big garage sale facebook marketplace left everything that couldn't it came and i stayed in a hotel for two weeks put it all on the line if you want to see more videos and interviews like this from influential people in tech finance and sports subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit the bell to be alerted and go a step further and join the youtube and membership area for early releases of videos like this i'm out of here ha! It's your boy crypto blood and welcome to another kicking the session today i've got a legendary guy in the game host of around the blockchain and so many other channels dz from the hit network what's going on bro thanks for Man, tuning in and I, I, I joining came me in, on i came in wearing my red on purpose today i was telling my uh, girl look, like, i got hey, on blue I, I got oh man what happened <laughs> Now we know why we put you in the blue square around the blockchain. Right, 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 right. So, guys, if you don't know, you should know. You've seen him on Around the Blockchain and many other shows on BitBoy Network. Let's just start with the basics, the, the history um, before crypto. Not before COVID, but before crypto. Yeah. Okay. BC. Crypto. BC. Yeah. BC. I, I want to know about your life. I heard you were from North Carolina. How did you make it to Georgia and all that, man? So kind of yeah, give us a, so, a backdrop. I started out as a zygote in my dad's testicles, right? And I was just swimming around, <laughs> swimming around. Uh, we fast forward a little bit. I Yeah, I'm from North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina, Port City. Okay. Shout out to anybody of uh, North Cackalac. Uh, I lived out there. It's where I graduated high school. So, you know, when I became an adult, just kept living there. Did some odd ends, just regular, just types of jobs, did some sales jobs. I did some bartending, uh, hospitality service. Uh, ended up owning uh, my own business at one point, but I was going back to school because I owned my own business. It was a garage. And I was like, man, there's a little bit of a lack of understanding I have when it comes to accounting and taxes and all this stuff. So I went back to school, Went. To, I was going to school for accounting, and I just had a bug to be a Twitch streamer. And I dropped out of school so I could stream Magic the Gathering professionally. And uh, it, was a, it was a big risk, big risk, but it ended up paying off. It's led me to where I am right now, talking to Crypto Blood. Are you serious? He dropped out. See, I have never been on Twitch, bro. And now Twitch is more so uh, or less so about gaming, correct? Mm -hmm. it, it has a broader yeah, audience, right? The IRL, it's called Just Chatting, it used to be IRL back in the days. Yeah, it's a lot of people, it's like variety shows and just a lot of people like talking. Then they had the whole hot tub meta. Uh, I, I got out of Twitch uh, for crypto and Twitch just started going a little bit crazy, a little bit uh, just a little regard? loony. Well, it's ran by people who, you know, one of the people on a Twitch board identified as a deer and you couldn't call out how ridiculous that was if that kind of tells you there's a lot of people with you know brightly colored hair and just kind of pushing certain agendas and i could feel the constraints and i could feel the freedom slipping away and i could feel like myself being pigeonholed into this little box and i eventually just i saw a lifeboat that lifeboat was called bitcoin i, I cl just clinged on to it and just been holding on for dear life ever since how did you find bitcoin what was your journey to that space well, well i was on 4chan you know back in the day uh like uh you know over 10 years ago so i remember seeing it on 4chan but to me 4chan was just like this real sketchy don't touch anything never click on any link it's nothing but hackers they're going to try to get you to delete system 32 you know just stay away <laughs> it's just you go there for your memes That's right funny. and so to me the whole thing was a scam and later i had a buddy he was used to silk road to buy mushrooms or ecstasy or something i don't know and he Basically, uh, he was the one trying to get me to get into Bitcoin. He lost all this Bitcoin. He forgot, mm -hmm. I guess he forgot his, you know, the, the keys to his wallet or something. And I was like, I knew it was a scam. He ends up getting it. You know, he's still using Silk Road. He still uses Silk Road. 
uh, ends up losing all his Bitcoin on Mt. Gox. I'm like, man, this whole thing sucks, man. So I just wow. I just stayed away on the sidelines because of all those reasons. I was like, 4chan, there's a lot of hackers, a lot of scammers. You know, I don't know if there's something there. My buddy, he did use it. He ended up losing this. And now, like, I'm just thinking, like, well, there's all this risk involved and everyone I know involved with it lost all their money. And so that kind of kept me on the sidelines. But then the bull run of 2017 happened. I remember seeing it pretty early. I was actually in a, an accounting class when other people started talking about it. I was like, wait a minute, I'm not the only one who knows what Bitcoin is. And then it just started going crazy. You remember what, 2017? I remember of course. seeing it before 10K. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this is pumping. This is insane. Kept pumping, kept pumping, kept pumping. So that's when I started doing a lot more research on it. I, I used Reddit primarily. And I don't remember when I found, I don't know if it was Twitter. I don't know if it was Reddit. I just remember I saw a chart with the price and the halving schedule. You can see the lines mm. and it was like, mm -hmm. you know, this very, you know, pretty close every four years. And I, I saw even early, uh, you can see that there's a little bit of a pattern starting to form. And I could see, oh, you want to buy closer to the halving. You don't want to buy when it's skyrocketing. So I remember thinking under 10K, oh, this is a scam. This is way too expensive. Don't buy, don't buy, you know, wait for it to go down. Then it went to 10K, then it went to 15K, you know, eventually hit 20K in December of 17. And then that's when I was like, okay, as it started to plummet, that's when I started getting a little bit more interested and I ended up purchasing probably six months after the top DCA, DCA, and you know, the rest is history. So were you ever into the financial markets prior to crypto? Because yeah. for you to know, like, to wait for a pullback sounds kind of like you knew what you were doing. Yeah, so I used to set my alarm to, I, I swear the bell was at 10 a.m. Or maybe it was just for the show that I watched. I used to set my alarm for like 9.57 a.m. I'd wake up, I'd watch the morning bell. I, I was watching, you know, business news channels. I was really into okay. stocks. So I was really yeah. into stocks. I was really into tech stocks. I had a fairly robust uh tech portfolio and then i end up running into some legal issues and i had to sell everything and uh mm. that's uh so I, I was i was itching you know i needed to get back into the investment game i needed to start deploying some capital and then so i saw a bigger opportunity with crypto versus you know the traditional stock market so i'm gonna be vlad right now i'm gonna be vlad tv uh wh what were those legal issues you ran into well i i did own my own business it was a garage uh, we did oil changes and inspections, and on my birthday, maybe a coincidence, maybe not, I had a buddy in <laughs> California mailed me a package, a birthday package, one may call it, and it was intercepted, <laughs> and I had an employee pick it up. I didn't touch the package. An employee of mine, my, my head mechanic, he ended up picking up this package. I was away from the shop. I was picking up uh... brake pads from, you know, auto supplier or warehouse or something, and he called me, he's like, hey, I grabbed the mail and a bunch of cops came here. You might want to come here. <laughs> and so I was like, look, this is my business. You know, the package is probably, you know, directed to me. I don't know what this I'll, is. I'll fall on the sword. The, the, the detectives are actually like, open it, open it, open it. You know, we're, we're all standing around. I, I grabbed a, a Sharpie. I wrote, return to sender. I pushed it back across <laughs> that. I don't know what this is. Needless to say, they didn't care about that. They opened it right in front of me. They were like, oh, a little birthday package, huh? So that was, uh, that was my 30th birthday. Happy birthday to me. Oh, man. So what the guy that got you into, well, you first knew about who knew about Bitcoin and was interacting with it and using it. Where is he today? Is he still into crypto? Is Luke Stavely, uh, I think he Luke, is. What up, crew. Luke? Yeah, I haven't, I haven't talked to Luke lately. I need to give him a call, see what Luke is up to. Uh, but last I heard, man, he was just, he was living under his uh, his income, right? And if you can live underneath your income, if you can have a lifestyle underneath what you earn, it will, you will have a freedom most people cannot even fathom. Just living below your means will give you what, what's that? Un, un, unsurpassed freedom. Yeah, people don't want to do that, man. They want to live I don't in know. That. I don't yeah. think America knows what that is. No, I have a mortgage, so I mean, I can't really say anything. But yeah, it's it's uh, it's good advice. And that's something he was really, really into. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Luke's doing pretty good these days. So you, I didn't know you were into cars and you had a shop and all that. Uh, man. See, that's uh, the problem. I really wasn't. So I'm older. Oh, you know, so it was I'm just 38. a front. It was just yeah, a front. Yeah, I'm 38. For, well, it was my mechanic. Shipments. My mechanic. The quick story how it happened. You know, I, I dropped off my Denali for some work. And it should have been done in like three days and like four or five days passed. I was like, man, this guy hadn't called me. I called 
the the shop like the the regular phone nothing like it was like mm. doo, 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 doo. i'm like well this yeah. ain't a good time <laughs> oh. i get a ride I'm to uh, the shop out. and uh him and just some random guy they're like standing outside and i could tell they don't have electricity i'm like what the hell is going on they're like yeah we're going out of business uh we're just kind of basically waiting for the lease to run out for all the people to pick up their vehicles that we've been working on they said do you know anyone looking to buy a business i have some money laying around i was like yeah i'll do it and so i wasn't really i was never the guy that you know pre-smartphones we used to like read magazines and stuff i was never the guy that picked up the car magazine i was never the guy like oh, putting okay. body work on my eclipse you know trying to make it look like <laughs> paul walker's i was never that guy Okay, okay, okay. I thought I thought you were too fast, too furious there. No, no. Re rest in peace. Rest in peace. But I do yeah. love family, Corona, and I do live my life one quarter mile at a time. <laughs> well, before I ask you about the markets, the crypto markets, um, tell us how you your journey to um, Atlanta or yeah. outside of Atlanta, Hit Network Studio, Fit Boy, Ben. I just had Ben on over the weekend. Yeah. Uh, on the live stream. That was great. Uh, how did you meet him or uh, TJ? Or how, how did yeah, that kinda, all come about? Kind of funny story. Uh, I was I discovered Ben via CEO of Facts on TikTok. So I saw him before I ever saw him on YouTube talking about Bitcoin. I saw him talking about Tor browsers and Onion and you know the dark web and all the scary stuff and you know Hitman and all. So I was like watching all that stuff on TikTok. And at this time, I'm a Magic the Gathering streamer. I, I'm doing it full time. I'm on an esports team. I have sponsors. I'm like doing tournaments. I'm hosting. So you're tournaments. making money being a gamer. Yeah, I'm a full time gamer. I'm I'm a professional Magic the Gathering streamer. This is what I do you, full time. There is no plan up. B. No plan B. You know, this is what I'm doing full time. And that I'm increasingly. Like I'm in. Well, it kind of was, but the pandemic happened. Uh, it you think I, my viewers went up but my viewers had less money it seemed like yeah sure stimmy checks drop maybe it makes it rain for a week but i should i should have jumped in it earlier so I'm, I'm streaming magic every day but i'm i'm being obsessed with crypto uh you know okay. the whole time i've been buying 2018 2019 and you know 2020 my bags start going up i know i'm starting mm -hmm. to look i'm starting to get a little bit more interested this is now we're in early 21 and at this point, I I don't want to say I hate streaming, but the amount of passion and attention I want to give to crypto was just greatly dwarfing my day to day job with Magic the Gathering. I'm literally this is a, not an easy game. It's you know it's it's up there with chess. I, I you know it's, there's chess pros, there's uh, bracelet winners, a World uh, Series of Poker. There's very very high level people playing this. I'm playing at a high level. I, I'd hit top ten globally multiple times. I'm I'm not playing Joe Schmoes. I'm sitting here, you know, playing like very introverted nerds that look and talk like Vitalik. And that's what I'm trying to play against while I'm entertaining hundreds of people. And then at the same time, I have on my other screen trading view open with the one minute chart and I'm in a long. And so I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to play this game and I'm like looking at, oh, I missed my entry. Uh, green dot, right. green dot. And not only that, I'm starting to want to watch more BitBoy. I'm starting to want to watch more Crypto Capital Ventures, more Crypto Blood, more, you know, just all the crypto channels. I'm starting to, I'm, I'm yearning. I'm wanting to end my stream early so I can catch mm. up on crypto YouTube. And wow. I saw an opportunity with BitBoy Crypto. They said, yeah, we're going to do a NFT trading card game. And I just, I just shot my shot. I, I, I cold messaged TJ because I was like, if I if I message BitBoy, it's going to get lost in the noise. So let me right. let me message you know the the number two at the company, the CEO of the company, and I, I was like, hey, here's my background. I'm a pro gamer. I'm one of the best players in the world at this time. I had the world's number one Magic the Gathering TikTok account. I had, and I, I'm blowing up, and I I say, look, I'm willing to abandon everything, jump ship, come work for you guys. I need to get into Web three. I need to get into crypto. I'm increasingly dissatisfied with what I'm doing. They said, hey, we have a meetup in a couple weeks. Come to the meetup, chat with us. If it works out, hey, maybe it works out. After the meetup, they're like, yeah, you know, this, they're really non-committal. They're like, yeah, yeah, I guess it'll be cool. And I go back home, I'm like, do, do I have a job? I, I don't know what's going on. I'm like, I'm kind of afraid to over message. I don't want to be a bugaboo. Right, right, right. And then uh, some random stream, TJ and Ben, they're like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think DZ's here this weekend. He's going to start next week. And I was like, uh, I, I, I am? I don't know. It's news to me. I literally packed my car 
left a whole bunch of stuff uh big garage sale facebook marketplace packed my car left everything that couldn't and came and i stayed in a hotel for two weeks and then ended up uh, moving out here yikes that's a leap of faith right there for put you. it all on the line put it all on the line so did you did you like <clears throat> you know because you had a, you had a brand you had a with the magic the gathering which is hilarious because mount gox yeah is were you on mount gox before mount gox i was not i, I did play online a little bit but i i wasn't uh, playing online i think maybe i was playing the paper version so the mount gox was how you could buy the digital cards i wasn't using uh mount gox at the time but i i, I quickly learned it was all the connected. synchronicity though that's so crazy yeah right yeah. that's so crazy so, so my local co- card shop, he was actually going to buy Mount Gox. He ended up creating his own entity and end up making the world's largest global digital marketplace. It's called Moto Magic Online or whatever, or something like that. Uh, I, I forget the exact name. But yeah, it was uh, the Mount Gox guy was, I mean, I almost was going to be living in the town of the new owner of Mount Gox. That is wild. crazy. That is crazy. So for those who don't know, like Mount Gox that you guys know in crypto, was uh, actually acquired, I don't know, by some guys in Japan. Uh, but the original Mount Gox website was a site for Magic the Gathering card game, which DZ, right, was yeah. was uh, a and, pro at. Yeah, Mount Gox Magic the Gathering online exchange. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That's crazy. So did you, did you monetize uh or, or sell your your brand from the mount gox trading stuff no or you just no let it go? i basically i just let it go you know uh it was it was hard at first you know my twitter i would t- tweet about bitcoin and everyone just say shut up and play magic uh and i lost <laughs> a lot of the people there's a lot of the I'll, I'll say you know some of the guys uh in magic gathering you know some of the the nerdier, more introverted people, they, they made a very quick transition magic to, to crypto. It's all kind of semi-related. It's kind of plays into the same personality types. But then there's that whole other portion of Twitch I was kind of telling you about. Uh, they were not friendly uh, towards it, and it pissed off a lot of people because back then there's more of a narrative of uh, you burn a rainforest every time you make an NFT or swap crypto or pay a gas oh fee. You know, you're, you're chopping down you're chopping down seven trees every time five dollar gas fee so i was i was fighting that and so a lot of people just turned their back on me it was just like huh you've changed man wow wow a hit network you're now if i bring it up you're now the cmo of a new company over yeah. there that you you guys i don't know you i don't know if you co-founded it or or what but vumio tell us about that i did have bitboy Tell us a little bit about it because he brought it up over on the live stream over the weekend. But tell us about Vumio and uh, any other projects that you're working on as well. Yeah, me and Justin, uh, me and Justin work together. He's the CEO of Vumio. I'm the, the chief marketing officer. We're getting ready right now. We actually just had a little bit of a delay with, uh, you know, we're hoping to launch maybe next month. Maybe now it's going to be a little bit closer to two months, but we should hopefully get the beta out in two months. It's going to be a new era for NFTs. You can see it right there. It's going to be the first marketplace that has Cardano and Ethereum together. This is huge. Uh, There's a very, very big gulf, a big divide between those two chains. Not so much the community, but when it comes to the developers. And you might have a little insight to that. It's it's two completely different coding languages. It's two completely different camps. They kind of don't like each other uh, when it comes to the developer side. When it comes to, you talk to Ethereum Foundation people and ask them what they think about Charles. Very strong language. You might see similar things with Cardano Foundation, maybe less so though. And the community, the though, and bloods out here. Yeah, what the hell is going yeah. on here, people? Uh, the Can people, we all though, get along. Rodney it, King. Yeah, yeah, he didn't do anything wrong. Why you drag him out of that truck? Um, but <laughs> the communities don't really care. Really about care. It. About it. It's it's uh, it's the other people. So uh, I we, we just want to bring the communities together. We want it to be the Amazon of uh, NFTs and Web three in general. So. It's going to be a lot of cool features. We want to launch the beta as soon as possible while making sure, you know, there's no exploits, making sure all the data is correct. So we might not have all the bells and whistles, but the bells and whistles, trust me when I say there's a lot of things no one else is even coming close to doing. Uh, There's a lot of things. I don't want to give away too many of our secrets because we're not closer to launch. 
Uh, but people yeah, are really, really going to like Ben told us he yeah. dropped a couple. I'm not going to repeat them, but yeah, the, it sounds like some good stuff, man. I'm no lie. No lie. I'm, you know, I never really got into like you're knee deep into the NFT space. Yeah. What what attracted you to that area of cryptocurrencies? Like I'm an OG crypto coiner type dude. So I never really got deep into the NFT space. The NFT space meaning like, you know, the you go you guys call it PFP, but I just call it PP. Mm -hmm. Uh tell us why that attracted you. Was it because of your kind of card playing Mount Gox days or what? Kind of give us it, it was it was exactly that. My first okay. NFT I ever bought was Gods Unchained. Uh Gods Unchained is a card game that was founded by gotcha. a, a, one of the team members of Magic the Gathering. And so my first NFTs, I didn't really even know what the heck I was doing. It mm -hmm. was all on Immutable X. They were doing it like, you know, via their L2. So I didn't even know, yeah. like I didn't have a MetaMask and a showing JPEGs in there. I just knew I had an online account with this card playing game. I learned out later, oh, I was collecting NFTs in 2020, way ahead of right. most people. Right. And then when I came to work for BitBoy, very quickly, I, I was actually in the office of Justin. And so I'm hearing him talk about NFTs. And he's just like, yeah, you know, if, if you want to get into it, here's what you do. And it was Wax. I got into Wax after Immutable X. And he would do it with other people in the office. But I was one of the people that just dove right into it. There's a little DeFi plays on Wax. There's Play to Earn. Uh, shout out to Alien Worlds, one of the OGs in the yes. space. And so yes. Alien Worlds, I think I played it for all of seven days. But it got me hooked. I was like, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. I got this thing for literally 10 cents and it made me a dollar. And then I bought some for $10 and it made me $6. And I was like, this is all like in seven days. Well, I can't only imagine what if I played this for a year? Uh, what would right. happen? What if I bought a $100 item? So I think I did like escalate pretty quickly. You know, I'm getting like $140 play to earn items that are like making me eight bucks a day or whatever. And I, it was just immediate. I was hooked. I was just hooked immediately to the DeFi aspects. Gotcha. Yeah. That now that aspect was pretty or is pretty cool to me. The DeFi NFT combination, because um, I'm all about you know capitalism and making some money and willing and dealing. So if you can combine that with NFTs, I'm all for it. So you said wax. Like I personally think that's one of the more underrated mm -hmm. blockchains when it comes to nfts what's your take what's the best blockchain for nfts to you well first i would say wax is correctly rated because of their okay. ram and cpu that mm. is a, a huge hurdle when it comes to onboarding new people it's weird it's strange it's like oh you have to add it's ram just part of the it's part of eos ios yeah but it, it, yeah. but sometimes it's like you have to add ram or you have to add cpu but sometimes you have to add both and then like that's a complicated process if you don't have one to do the others to do it in a specific yes. order and that that, that was uh, a little bit uh frustrating um but as far as now i mean i'm, I'm more into the cardano i'm more into the ethereum and the, the wax was just kind of, it just got, started scratching the surface. And it, it taught me about get in early, get out early. Uh, this was mm. before Axie Infinity. And I saw what happened with Axie Infinity. You know, I was in Step In, I was in Bomb um, Crypto, I, I was in some of these. And I saw how they all basically dilute themselves to zero. And so now yeah. I feel like a lot of the community is taking a step back and waiting for someone to do it correctly. And I'm kind of in the same boat. If I see something that's really, really good, when I am most bullish, I'm going to try to tell myself, well, start selling, start getting out, start scaling yes. out. Guess what? The party's about to be over. The music's going to yep. stop playing. The lights are going to be turned on. And you've been grinding with, you've been bumping uglies. <laughs> Yo, so what about Virtua? Like, uh, I have some land over there. Speaking of Card Cardano, this is the only reason I have Cardano or ADA tokens is because of Virtua. Are you involved in this at all are you excited about what's going on with there were some big names that were involved in the uh land grab for this i have not this, I, i've definitely word? heard about it it's on a lot of people's radar i'm kind of a one winner takes all type person when it comes to these ecosystems so i i got okay. a, i'm betting on a different horse when it comes to cardano i'm, I'm kind of all in with yuga that was yuga not by me well it was the eth for the eth chain i'm, I'm all in with uh, what board ape and what they're doing over there because okay. I got in earlier, mutant ape. I, I got lucky, y'all. Like, I got lucky. I got in at three yep. some ETH. 
I don't know what ETH was at the time, but it definitely wasn't 4,500 or anything. So I got in, uh, you know, I've rode that to the top, still diamond handed, wrote it down. You know, I've, I've watched my mutant evaporate $100,000 uh, in value there. So, you know, I've, I've felt the pain. But with Cardano, there is one team that's, they're doing a lot. Uh, they're starting with a racing game. They do want to do a metaverse. I think what is going to be a winning strategy for metaverses, it isn't going to be launch with what we think of as a metaverse where you're kind of walking around and you walk up to someone and maybe a chat bubble pops up. I don't know if that's going to be the vehicle to get people excited. I think the vehicle to get people excited will be the mini games, the mini games that exist within that metaverse. And so there's one team there. They're starting with a racing game. And that racing game will then dictate, you know, how the world works, how the, the graphics and the engine and the physics engine and everything. And that is uh, Cornucopias. And they have the Charles Hoskinson seal of approval. I don't actually own any Cornucopias what, what, assets. What is this project called? Cornucopias. And they actually have a multi-chain coin, Kopi. I don't actually own any Kopi. I, I should probably buy some Kopi. Uh, in fact, maybe I'll DCA into it Friday. Maybe I'll DCA this week because that is one I've been talking, thinking about. Yeah, Charles Hoskinson. He's like, he's repeatedly brought it up. And at CNFT Con, they brought like 10 TVs with 10 consoles and every, people were able to play the racing game. And it looked fun. It, it looks like F-Zero. Yeah, that's it right there. It kind of looks like an F-Zero racer. Um, bro, they keep... Now, I will say that they, they've raised a lot of money, so there are high expectations but I'll say even their fourth drop, their fifth drop, I don't know what they had. Even their last drops, they sell out very quickly. It's a very strong community. Mm -hmm. VC money, Char uh, Hoskinson seal of approval. I I'm pretty bullish on that one. Even though I don't own any, own any assets, um, you know, but I'm, I might make a change, though, in the next few days. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, I don't know about this one. Thanks for putting me up on it. I'll definitely take a look at it. I was, uh, I'm just curious about this Virtua thing or Virtua. Um, and I actually stumbled across this because they wanted to, they had me do some paid promotion to work on it. Dude, I'll give you an AI coin. All right. So uh, AI, I got a contentious yeah. relationship with this project. Uh, it got <clears> brought <throat> up on the morning stream. Uh, AI coin got brought up and I, I, I want to just slip out the name because it's like an under. I, I'm going to give your, your audience a, a small market cap gym here. All right. Does your audience like low cap gyms? Yeah, yeah, for sure. If you like a low cap gym, will you please hit that like button? If you hit this yes. like button, you are going to pump this low cap gym for your bags. <laughs> so buy some and then hit the right. like button uh, or right. just hit the like button right now. Uh, Pixia. Uh, I, I was like, yeah, Pixia, you know. But then uh, Drew was playing TJ's role and he's like, Pixia AI and like said it all like very clearly. And then I, you know, we, we kind of don't like saying the small cap gyms on that channel. So I was like, yeah, probably nothing going to zero. Uh, you know, I didn't take profits. I, I'm holding on to it. Um, I bought in. It doubled. I didn't take any profits. It went down. I might scoop up some more. Depends if uh, what I got. I don't know. I might look at that and get some more Kopi. Um, so yeah, that, that's um, what, what's their market cap? Um, their Pixie, market I, cap I right coin now Gecko. is. I don't even have it. Maybe coin market cap. It. Maybe coin market cap might have. Maybe. it. I think, man, I want to say it's like under ten maybe under five at this price at three cents it could be under five which is guys all right you, you see these market caps of something with 200 million 300 million and it'll double so when you're at three million it really really can dude look at that that's fully diluted fully mm. I, i'm almost like now i almost feel bad because uh we can get like one whale pump that 80 percent. yikes where can we buy this uh uniswap so i, I yeah, just right click saved okay. and uh took it to uniswap gotcha gotcha wow right. well there you go another right. gym little, little gym little gym for y'all yeah for sure for sure man so i appreciate you coming on what do you have planned for the future let's say the next six months what are you guys planning on are you just kind of focused Vumeo, on Vumeo, 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 man. Yeah, we're yeah. going to be doing the conference circuit just then. We're going to be probably rolling out some of these features. I guess Ben maybe shared uh, some alpha on that. So, you know, our aggregator, we want to make sure our aggregator is looking clean. We want to do a, uh, like a point based system, uh, like kind of similar to coin gecko, you know, you can like log into coin gecko. If you like click the little thing, it does something. So there's all those like little moves you can do. So the one thing oh, yeah. that Ben um, did mention was like the chat room thing. So that's going to be cool. The chat box. Yeah, we want to do a thing where, you know, it sucks leaving 
OpenSea or JPEG store or wherever to learn about a project. You have to go to Twitter, then Twitter Discord takes you to Discord, and then Discord says go to this channel. But you that channel, you got to verify. And now you're on collab land, and you're like, what? I, can you just tell me what the hell you're doing on Tuesday? That's all I wanted mm -hmm. to know. You're making me mm -hmm. jump through hoops. And so we're going to have a like a, a function where the community can communicate to the holders directly. You know, maybe we make it where only people that hold the NFT can see this, uh, you know, via Web3 integration. So that's one of the cool things we're going to do. The aggregator, I don't, as far as I know, there's no marketplace with an aggregator on Cardano. Uh, that, so that's going to be a cool. And then uh, the points feature, like CoinGecko, you, you click the button, you know, it gives you, hey, you clicked in today, you know, click in 24 hours later, you get more points. We're going to gamify maybe some, a little bit of a point system. Like if you list one, you sell one or you buy one, maybe that gets right. you points. And then you'll right. get points that accumulate. Now, mm -hmm. why would we want to have some sort of ranking system for our mm -hmm. users? I don't know. I don't know. I do know what the marketplace meta is right now. And so yeah. that's all I can say. That's all I yeah. can say. All right. There you go. There you so go. you might want to level up. You gotta level up on Vumio. Where how the name? Where do you guys get that from? Uh, I uh, the Voom token, and so it kind of spun out from Voom token. I think they thought of the token. Wait a minute, I don't know why I said token. We're not confirming anything. Said too much. Actually, <laughs> there, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Well, Vumio, it is Vumio.io. Yeah, Vumio. Check those guys out. You guys got to get um voom.io yeah it's some other that. stupid company has it already I saw like that. they seem like they're pretty serious it's not like a go daddy oh, thing it's okay. like you know i mean they're like actually worth money you're like dang it all right <laughs> they're not gonna want to let go of that all right well there there you have it ladies and gents dz.e so you do you uh host around the blockchain what else do you do over there on, on occasion i do the morning stream uh you know on occasion we got nft alpha crypto tacos kind of taken over but on occasion you might see me popping up on that and right now okay. I've, I've just been doing vumeo spaces regularly and doing a little bit of the interview circuit cool channels like yours just kind of spreading the word of what we're building yeah there you go make sure you go check out his interview with rice tvx as well uh, that dropped maybe about a week or and a half or so ago. So definitely great content. Great to have DZ on. Great to be on the other side. You know, usually DZ is asking us questions on Around the Blockchain. Now I get to ask him a few uh, questions. So DZ, great having you on. I'll have a link to all of his info in the description of this video. Make sure you guys go check him out. Go follow him on Twitter. You got 40,000 just hit it doing man your thing. doing your I'm, thing i'm doing it man it's all from scammy nft giveaways i'm kidding i'm <laughs> kidding i haven't done that in months <laughs> in months all right ladies and gents that's another kicking session make sure you got a lecture